Today I have the new Huion Canvas Pro 19, a 4K 19 inch display featuring their new Pentec 4.0 technology. This one's got a lot of hype to it folks. Let's see how it holds up. The first thing we get is a quick start guide, followed by a color calibration report directly from the factory. We have an external power brick, which you're going to need. This is a 4K display, two USB-C cables. We're gonna walk through connectivity in a little bit. You have a three and two cable with HDMI, USB-C, and USB-A on one end, and USB-C times two on the other end. A smudge guard art glove, which I used for ninja fights when I wasn't drawing. A microfiber cloth for cleaning. A sharp looking pen case with our not one, but two included pens. The Key Dial Mini Bluetooth Programmable Keypad, we'll get into that. And this rounds out a really, really nice piece of kit. Taking a look at the tablet itself, the Canvas Pro 19 comes equipped with kickout legs and holes to connect to any VESA compatible stand or arm. Now along with this display, you're going to get a bump in color specs. The color gamut volume is 150% sRGB, which I think is another way of saying color gamut coverage, 99% sRGB. 96% Adobe RGB, and 98% DCI P3. It's not going to be able to show you Rec. 709 type colors or be Pantone certified or anything like that that's going to add to the price. However, you do get 1.07 billion colors with this display. Certainly more than enough for the majority of us. The display is light at 4.4 pounds, and those kickout legs give you about 20 degrees in height. I recommend, however, at least picking up a cheap Huion stand which I just happen to have one laying around, or attaching this to an arm that's going to give you a lot more flexibility and degrees of height. I'll link the one I'm using down below. Hey, it's John. When I'm not on YouTube, I'm out in the forest saving koala monkeys by punching down trees with my bare hands. Anyways, if you could leave a like and a comment, it would really give me some motivation to keep on going. This monk is really counting on you. Poor little guys. Connectivity is really easy. You're going to need the power brick of both scenarios, as it needs the extra juice because it's a 4K display. Your USB-A goes into the host computer along with your HDMI port, and then you'll attach the brick to the remaining USB-C cable. On the display itself, you'll insert the two USB-C cables, and of note, it does feature a 3.5mm headphone jack, which is still useful on a display of this size. The laptop setup is even simpler. You're going to use the two included USB-C cables. One goes from display to the laptop, while the other goes from the display to the power brick into the wall. You get two pens with the Canvas Pro 19. Along with it, you get 10 spare nibs, five felt for a sketchier pen experience, and five standard nibs. The PW600 is what you would expect in a typical Huion pen. It adds a third programmable button along with the original two, and for the first time features an eraser in the back. Its counterpart, the PW600S, is really just a slimmer version. It does lose that third programmable button, but retains the added eraser. The grip on the barrel of these pens are less rubbery, makes them less sticky, and prone to picking up dust. Side by side, the pens are about the same length, and the nibs are snug without getting ridiculously tight. The big upgrade here is that these battery-less pens feature Huion's Pentec 4.0. This is their newest and latest tech, tweaking the length of the nib and other things to reduce parallax and to give the pen their most accurate feel. There's a big jump in pressure sensitivity at 16,384 levels. The tilt support is still 60 degrees, and that sensing height is about the length that they tweaked the nib to hone in on that accuracy, as I mentioned. On the back of the pen case is your nib remover. You just pop it in, Tilt it slightly and the nibs should come out. Just be careful when replacing those nibs not to push them in too far, you'll damage the pen. Finally, the case doubles as a pen holder for both of your PW600 series pens. Am I the only one that finds it weird that Huion ships its newest pen in a nice pen case and features an eraser and the newest Wacom pen doesn't either? What universe is this? The included key dial mini is a welcome replacement for express keys attached to the display. It works over Bluetooth. It's got 18 programmable keys, five of which are anti-ghosting, which means those five will keep up with you when you get all clicky clicky. The dial itself is multifunctional, meaning when you push the button in the middle, it'll cycle through different options like zoom and brush size, etc. And that's programmable as well. It holds a charge for a long time. And the best thing I could say about the key dial mini is 
it does its job well. It's not overly fancy or complicated, but it gives you enough keys that you probably won't need a keyboard. Now, specs don't mean anything if the pen doesn't perform. Beginning with Photoshop, I've got a hard brush with no stabilization on to test this line wobble. Slow diagonal lines are a good indication of the accuracy of the pen overall if the wobble is kept at a minimum. As you can see here, Huion effectively eliminates almost all evidence of line wobble. Zoomed in, it doesn't get too much better than this. I've got Krita open to test initial activation force and to see what those 16,000 of pressure levels actually gives me in real life scenarios. We'll start with a basic pencil and I'm doing these wiggly lines to see how light the line begins in the beginning and as I press harder throughout the length of the line, what kind of gradient I get. As you can see, I'm getting a ridiculous amount of gradient here and I mean that in a good way. On a light end, this is about the most sensitive I've seen a Huyang pen. Switching to the G pen, we're doing a similar thing, except I want it in black to see how consistent those thin to thick lines go in a long stroke across the screen. In a similar test, we start a ribbon, and at the end, notice we're not really seeing any shoelacing effect, even as we move into ellipses. At the beginning of those strokes, it's pencil pencil thin. As I'm pressing harder to complete the circle, in all four ellipses along the middle end. We end thick as I'm pushing harder while observing the length of the taper off and again, no shoelace effect. Yes, it is. Yes, there is. What do you know? You burned water last night. You were making pancakes in the microwave, which by the way, is for animals. The last thing we'll do with Krita is do some hatch lines. I'm really just testing parallax here and EMR lag. I observed there's virtually no parallax. And while there is always going to be EMR lag on an EMR tablet, the cursor keeps up while not dragging too far behind the pen tip. The last thing we're going to test is tilt. This app Expressy gives you guys a visual perspective of when I'm actually tilting the pen and how the tablet is picking it up. And I want to do the same thing in Clip Studio Paint with a tilt enable pencil and if you notice I get a nice straight line when the pen is upright and I get a shading effect once I tilt it to the side. The specs on this display are impressive. Measuring diagonally at 18.4 inches it's a 4k resolution display at 3840 by 2160. It's an IPS panel at 60 hertz with a PPI at 238. With 4k resolution, a PPI that high on a screen at only 19 inches means it's going to be really crisp. Contrast ratio is a respectable 1000 to 1. The brightness is 220 nits. I think that's the highest for a Huyun display. Response time is 15 milliseconds and it features an end-to-end -end fully laminated anti-glare etched glass. Although I will tell you, this version of the etched glass has less tooth than some displays I've tested in the past. This is probably to help with nib wear, but if you're looking for more friction, just use the felt nibs. Last, you're reading that right. It features touch. Let's talk about that for a second. Although people are saying touch is only available in Windows, I have confirmed it is in beta for Mac OS. I wouldn't call touch a common feature on EMR pen displays. I was pleasantly surprised how responsive Huion's implementation of touch was. It is more responsive than my Cintiq Pro 24 inch. It's less laggy, it's more accurate, and the pinch to zoom is quicker. That surprised me, but if you're worried about touch and you really rely on it, this isn't gonna disappoint you here. By the way, if you're one of those people that touch bothers you, or you just don't feel like using it, you could turn it off by pressing the button right on the top next to the power. And just some brief coverage of the driver, and don't you guys click off. I could see you clicking off of my analytics. There's something important at the end you need to know. The driver is mature and fully functional. It gives you the ability to map your screen, flip the rotation, and customize those buttons on your pen. You've got easy shortcuts to adjust your pen pressure, and you could add different profiles per program, as well as back up your settings. In this software diagnosis tab, you have the ability to enable WinTab in case Windows Ink is freaking out on you or just not working right. All the same settings apply to the Key Dial Mini as well, including the ability to back them up. If you're on Windows and you're having a problem with touch, only working on your primary display and a dual display setup, go into the Control Panel and Tablet Settings, click this drop down and hit the Canvas Pro 19. It'll make you click the pen on the canvas itself and then it should allow you to calibrate it in case you get a message that the Canvas Pro 19 is not touch compatible. Believe me, it is. 
This will resolve any problems with the touch not working directly on Canvas Pro 19 if you have to display it. See, I told you that was going to be important. The eraser function is a welcome addition, but it doesn't really matter if the eraser itself doesn't perform. What I did here is I laid out a rough sketch that I'm actually drawing with the eraser to clean up the sketch. I did this for quite a while swapping out both pens and I found the eraser as accurate as the pen nib. Let's stick the landing on this one. There's a couple things to really call out. First of all, for you people who don't want to color calibrate and deal with any of that, they're doing that as a service right out of the factory. Next, the 19 inch is just about that size before you get to a point where you really can't travel with it. While this is more of a workstation type of a setup, you could theoretically take it away with you on a project somewhere to a local office or something like that. Would I fly with it? No, it's probably just a little too big for that, but it is somewhat more portable as long as you're not mounting it to an arm or something like that. Now, I've got to be honest with you. The pen's performance is really good. If you put this in front of me and told me it was a Cintiq, I honestly don't know if I could tell the difference. I couldn't say that even two years ago. Is that because of the 16,000 levels of pressure? I don't know. It presents an interesting case where for the first time, I would say if you're in the market for a pen display and you don't care about those fancy Pantone panels or whatever it is they're baking into these Cintiqs that are making them so ridiculously expensive, you're just not going to lose nothing in the pen by getting this Huion. I know sometimes the pen test can be boring, but I like to show you guys what I'm seeing and why I'm making the recommendation. So this way, nobody could come in the comments and say, why are you making that judgment? Where are you coming up with this stuff? Like, how are you getting to that point of view? Well, if you look at my reviews even two years ago, three years ago, with similar models, they're just not performing the way this one is today. Huion does offer a similar pen performance in the 27-inch model, so you do have a choice if you need a bigger deal. I just think you're talking about a tale of two different philosophies. Wacom has gone in on all these uh, extravagant features, which I guess there are people that need that stuff. But for the majority of us, this is going to perform spectacular at a massively, massively less price. When you compare this 19 inch against the Cintiq 17 inch, I mean, you're talking about over a thousand dollars of difference. And I don't know if you guys are asking me, honestly, it's a very, very small percentage of people that I could recommend shelling out that additional cash for. Anyway, obviously it's a go for me. I'm in love with the display and I'm in love with this pen and this Pentec 4.0. It's a winner. If you're interested in any of the things I mentioned in this video, all the links will be down below. If you're interested in any Huion reviews I've done before, I'll link them down below as well. Or you could check this one out right here. I'll see you guys in the next one.